Roblox as a platform is constantly evolving, with the new game trends appearing every day, like with the current one being gambling based, also known as RNG. Today I'd like to take a look back into the past and find some once popular games that have now been forgotten. To start off, for a few years there was a very popular obby game called Wipeout Obby by Audi 80 with it gathering 28 million visits, with hundreds of players every day in 2012 before it got content deleted which happened to get deleted when it was last updated coming out on the 28th of August 2022 which then the game got taken down. The game originally released back in 2009, sometime around the 23rd of May. Starting off with the original version, which released in 2009, it was simple with a cool water effect acting like a fountain with spheres and a simple parkour obby in the style of a TV show, Wipeout, with the famous red balls and the punching wall that knocks people into mud. Overall, as an obby, it's really good and sticks to the theme of it being based on Wipeout and you get the cool rewards in the end, that being the ice paths that were in every obby, but the one version that most of us will remember is the 2012 version. This version has been completely changed since the original release, with more detail in the background but the removal of the water fountains in the middle and an overall change to the course, while some of the things have been kept like the ball jumps, most things have been altered or changed like the removal of the mud course and added like a ball swing you have to get past. Overall this version is more polished than the first variant which did release in 2009 and the course itself is quite fun to play and the rewards at the end have been upgraded with helicopters and some cars for you and your friends to mess around with once you've completed the course. Another style of games that were popular in 2012 was role playing with Kingdom Life being one of the more popular role playing games with the sequel gained 16.8 million visits with the player counts around 400 players on at once. As a role playing game, it has a lot of content for when it released. Firstly, you have a wide selection of races and subclasses to choose from, which some contain a weapon and spawn in different areas across the map. Once you choose a class, you got an option between no fighting or being able to fight to enhance the experience. When you explore on the map, you will notice a few areas. A magic tower, a cemetery to the right of the castle where demons teleport from the underworld place, then a dungeon in the castle for heathens, a forest for the elves, a troll camp next to it, a small village in the middle of the map, and a mountain that is a dwarven village, that is like Fort Knox, with the entrance being able to get in via a one way. In current Roblox, this game is showing some age, as some of the weapons for this game are broken, but somehow the bows actually work, which if you have ever played old RPGs that have never been updated, the bows always latch to one direction no matter what. And the other thing is that I noticed, some of the class's legs look very weird and off-centred, but other than that, I could imagine some of the laws set in this game by random players all chipping in ideas on how to build onto it, which is something I wouldn't have not been able to do as I can't roleplay to save my life, which would have given me a one-way ticket to the dungeon. The next game was once the fifth most popular game on Roblox in 2012, called Build a Hideout and Fight, with it gathering 25 million visits, with it coming around August 2012, as the game before that was something completely different called Mineshaft before that got changed. In its prime, it was gathering 1000 concurrent players, which for 2012 standards, that was an insanely popular game, probably in part of its usage of the thumbnails, which changed fairly frequently depicting people inside of a built base or an army guy in the trenches. As for the game itself, in its current state, it's broken, with the building tools unable to place down any object or even break anything, and the starter weapon does look to work from the looks of it as it can reload and shoot perfectly fine. How the game would work is like Welcome to Roblox Building, 
as you get a stamper tool which can place down a selection of blocks and a hammer to destroy the mistakes and then you would build a base and then use the weapons you got to destroy the other players in the lobby which will then give you points that can be used to buy a better weapon from the shop. Its simple premise got a lot of players hooked on it even having a spin-off version which was exactly the same but instead of guns it used swords giving players some more options on if they prefer to get shot from long ranged or just to get stabbed in a close range combat. Both of these games are now a relic in the past that are now forgotten but you can still find modern recreations of these games around that have been heavily simplified down but still has that same enjoyment of building your base and surviving other plays in the lobby. But this next game is like that but instead of fighting people you have to survive zombies. Build to Survive Zombies was the other popular building game beside build a hideout and fight though it didn't reach the same heights as that game did but it still was able to get a bunch of players on at once. As for the game itself, the premise still stands of building the base but this time you have to survive waves of different zombie types, some being regular zombies, giants or even flying types which can mess up your day if you don't have a base with a roof, but that can be easily fixed by well, building a roof or trying to set up a trap and force them to fly into them and die by the spikes which would kill them instantly. If you try to play this game in modern Roblox, the same thing occurs with the building tools being broken, but at least the zombie spawns still work, but then it's a bit of a challenge to try and dodge them till the timer runs out to zero to obtain some points. Speaking of points, they can be used in the shop. The selection in this game is also bare bones, but for every wave you survive you gain points which then can be used to purchase weapons to help defend from the waves better or succumb to death and miss out on gaining some points to get that better weapon. Overall both games are really fun but do the same thing differently. With Built to Survive Zombies, personally for me being the more fun of the game as I like the selection of hordes you can face and it feels more like other people are not out to kill you and rather focusing on themselves, building a masterpiece or something to survive the wave for the points. Back onto the idea of roleplaying. One game was so popular you couldn't escape it when you logged into Roblox. That game was called Welcome to the Town of Robloxia by OneDev2, coming out sometime around September 2010 with it having 36.5 million visits. In its prime, the game was a smash hit with it gathering hundreds of players on at once throughout many years, staying in the front page of Roblox often. The game is currently closed as unfortunately the developer OneDev2 got terminated in the April Fools hack as their account got used as like a puppet account to hold valuable limiteds which caused the account to get terminated. This was a minor step back for the developer as they are still on the platform under the name OneDev3. Now back to the game itself, it's a rich role playing game with a wide selection of jobs you can choose to be like being a school worker, police officer or even a firefighter. There is a great selection of jobs for you to choose from with some having a gear tied to that job and cars that can only be accessed by people in that profession as well. To add to the role playing experience, you get a house for free which can start a car in the garage and offers a quite a nice space. Just make sure you lock up the place in case of any criminals are around, who knows what will happen if they break into your place. Another small thing I think helps with this game is that it has Magic Morph which essentially is a GUI that allows you to change the shape of your avatar with Roblox made packages or user created ones like a baby or even animals which adds a level of role playing experience of being a real family or the laughing stock at a zoo. I also like the added detail of that you get cash with a starting amount being 5 but you get a slow income of 5 every so often that can be spent at the supermarket to buy food or drinks or even a skateboard and let's say your friend is short on cash you can give them $5 to be able to afford the item that they were after. Overall as role playing games go this one is pretty good with a level of depth put into each job you can choose and the variety of options you get 
and with a full active lobby of role playing like you're in the suburb it sounds like it would have been a fun game to play and chill out and interact with other players you encounter around the town. The other popular role playing game around this time was called The Complex by Spyro372 with it gathering 25.8 million visits over its lifespan. The game would come out sometime around the 13th of January 2012 based on the amount of players who played the game in the last week to the total amount played. In its prime, the game was just as active as Welcome to the Town of Robloxia was, with it getting hundreds of players on at once. So then, what are the main differences between this game and Welcome to the Town of Robloxia? For starters, this game has a larger selection of jobs for you to choose from over the ladder, but no job specific items and no cars in the game but it offers larger apartments that feels like a penthouse with how much room you get and it offers more areas to choose from with a handy teleport button that lets you travel around the areas like with a bumper car area or go down the snow slope in the distance. Another big improvement I saw was in the character customization, with more options in terms of accessories, gears and even morphs for your character to choose from which didn't work on Novetus which is the program I'm using to simulate Roblox from 2011. Lastly the most noticeable difference I saw is the lack of currency, but with every item you can obtain at your disposal I don't think it would have mattered that much or made much of an issue that would affect the role playing experience. I do think this game is pretty good, with its huge selection of jobs and things to do, as well as how nice it looks for the time, especially the White Castle building. Like forget ordering a sandwich in real life, I'll just go do it in the complex, I may even get a cashier with a smile on their face, or well even an epic one. Overall this game offers a great role playing experience, and it makes sense why it was able to compete with Welcome to the Town of Robloxia as it offered way more to the player in how they can roleplay over the latter with some differences that can be overlooked given enough time on the game. The final game we'll be looking at in this video is Paintball by Daxter33, releasing on the 14th of August 2011, as the game prior was Laser Tag which later got changed to Paintball. The game gathered 47 million visits over its lifespan and in its prime it was able to get 1000 concurrent players on at once and when it was a slow day it still gathered hundreds of players on as well. The game itself was really fun to play with a wide selection of weapons you can choose from by gaining XP from tagging players in the game to level up, as well as a huge selection of maps to keep the game fresh and different game modes as well, which I think the most interesting one in the game was Body Swap, which as the name implies you had two teams, red and blue, if one of the players on the blue team shoots a player on the red team they will change to the blue team until one of the team is fully wiped out. You still had standard game modes like Capture the Flag and King of the Hill, but I do appreciate some of the game modes being different from others and making the game stand out because of it. Overall, this was one of the games I played a lot back in 2012, and I thought it was a really fun game to play, as its simplicity, shoot person in different team, and that was it, but it offered different maps and game modes that kept me coming back till I moved on to different games and then it faded out of existence completely. If you do want to play something like this, then there is still paintball games on Roblox with the biggest one from big games, with more of a modern take on the game, as you guessed it, it has loot boxes that can be opened and game passes, but the core of the game is still quite fun to play if you want that paintball experience. There are still a lot of games on Roblox like these that were popular back in the day but are now forgotten to time with newer and more fancy games coming out every day to draw people in to play that instead of games like these that get left in the past. Thank you for watching. If you like this video feel free to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any other ideas or videos feel free to leave them down in the comments as well as check out my discord server as I'm trying to build a community over there. Feel free to check out my join page if you wish to support the content I make and with that being said, I'll see you some other time.